on an all-new Dr. Phil. Chris Watts killed his wife and children. He annihilated his family. He had to break their bones to get them in this hole. Then lied to the world. Where are ways that you can make someone disappear? That's a hard question to answer. He laughs. He thinks he's the smartest person in the room. It's a deep dive. It was an oh my God moment. That only Dr. Phil can do. The scariest part is a narcissist thinks he can get away with it. It was an unthinkable crime that left people asking, Dr. Phil, who does this kind of thing? Chris Watts, a handsome and seemingly doting husband and father, seemed to have it all. He and his wife, Shannon, had two beautiful daughters and a son on the way. Then, in the early morning hours of August 13th, Shannon and the children mysteriously disappeared. Chris went on TV and begged for his family's safe return. But oddly, he didn't shed one single tear. And then in a disturbing twist, Chris Watts is arrested, charged with their murders, and even more horrifyingly, confesses to disposing of their bodies in a heartless and shocking manner. So what kind of man would do such a thing? Well, behind the smiles of this picture-perfect family were dark secrets that led to murder, and we're going to talk about how you can see those things coming. We're going to talk about it now. Take a look. A dark mystery in Frederick, Colorado. Concern in Frederick right now about a pregnant woman who is missing along with her two daughters. With a grieving father and husband left behind in a very empty house. I have no inclination of where they're at right now. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. She wasn't here. Kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. But in a video confession days later, Watts told his father he murdered Shannon in a fit of rage, claiming she killed their children. The husband of a missing pregnant woman is in jail and now charged with her murder. The day Watts killed his family, he called his daughter's school to say they would no longer be attending. And he also contacted a real estate agent about selling his home. The innocent laughter of children is gone. Mommy has a baby in her belly. Again. And the story of a once growing family ended. We have two kids. We live in Colorado, and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. <laughs> Despite portraying a happy family on social media, text messages between Shannon and Watts in the weeks leading up to the murders showed a fractured relationship. Prosecutors say Watts killed his family because of an affair he was having with the co-worker Nicole Kessinger. In a recorded interview with police the day Shannon and the girls were found dead, Kessinger appeared distraught. Oh, sad, and she's pregnant. God, and they're so cute, they're so little. Now the question remains, where are their bodies? Now, Chris Watts, who everyone described as calm, loving, and sweet, had murdered his children and wife in cold blood. He allegedly told investigators where to find their bodies on a property owned by the company he worked for. If the senseless deaths of their loved ones weren't enough, the discovery of their bodies was gut-wrenching. Shannon's body was found in a shallow grave near the girls' bodies, submerged for days in storage tanks filled with crude oil. Christopher Watts has been charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of tampering with evidence. His motive was simple, Your Honor. He had a desire for a fresh start. Get a divorce. You don't annihilate your family and throw them away like garbage. Court sentenced murderer Chris Watts to life in prison for killing his pregnant wife and daughters. I trusted you to take care of them, not kill them. And they also trusted you. Thank you, God. You heartless monster. Prison is too good for you. Now, I'm here 
with my really good friend Nancy Grace. She is an American legal commentator and television journalist as well as founder of Crime Online. So Nancy, welcome. Please welcome Thank Nancy Grace. Nancy, when you saw this case, I mean, what was it about this that you think captured the nation's attention? While he, Chris Watts, is trying to figure out how he's going to get with his lover, I mean, his wife has only gone a couple of weeks to see her family, and bam, everything was over in those few weeks. She was out buying self-help books. And just thinking of her, you know, in the bookstore looking for self-help books, how can I improve myself? And the whole time your husband is plotting your murder. One of the things that I, I've noticed, and you know, I've been involved in forensic psychology from the, I did a, a, a postdoctoral fellowship in forensic psychology mm -hmm. immediately when I, I graduated. So I've been doing this for 40 plus years. And you see certain characteristics and traits in these people. and. He started making really dumb mistakes really early, which narcissistic people often do because they see things only from their point of view. Now, before I play the interview, I want you to watch for some of the signs that we look for when you're doing a behavioral analysis, when you're looking at the psychology of a criminal. He doesn't refer to his family in any kind of intimate way. He doesn't use their names. It's called distancing. He uses pronouns like they and those kids. He only says their names one time. He says Shannon once, he says Bella once, and when he says Bella, he talks about her in the past tense, like she is already dead. And then I also want you to look at his physical distancing. He's in closed body position and he's rocking back and forth in a self-soothing sort of way. And he yeah. keeps getting further and further from the questions. And watch him licking his lips. And the fact of the matter is, psychologically, he's trying to wipe away everything he's saying. Take a look. Wherever they're at, like I have no inclination to where they're at right now. Like I've exhausted like every friend that I know of and every friend that I have has called friends that Shanann has that maybe I didn't know about. And it's just like, there's, it's like, it just vanished. Like she's not, like when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like she wasn't here, kids weren't here. So I have no idea like where they went. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. Bella was gonna start kindergarten next, next Monday. And they, they were just getting ready to start, start back again. I'm just hoping right now that she's somewhere safe. And maybe she's just, she's there. But right now it's just like, if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. There's no cameras in the backyard or anything like that, so it's, it's really hard to even suspect anything right now as far as how she could have left or if someone came picked her up or somebody took her. I've, I've never seen something like this in my lifetime unless it was on TV or a movie, and this, this doesn't seem real at all. It just seems like I'm, I'm living in a nightmare and I can't get out of it. I just want them home so bad. When I saw that interview, I said, we're looking at a killer right here. These are signals like a Navy flag man waving around what's going on. All right, now coming up, after Shannon Watts and her children were reported missing, police went to search the house and talked to her husband, Chris. They videotaped the whole thing. We're going to show you that video and tell you why police may have already thought he was the main suspect. We'll be right back. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's list today? So I went to a friend's house, but that's all I knew. Who was she supposed to go to? That's all she, that's all she told me. Said she's going to a friend's house and take care. And later... Research on psychopaths, and that's a clinical term. It's easy for these people to <clears throat> kill other people because they don't feel stressed. It's a DNA thing.
new video obtained shows the moments after Chris Watts murdered his pregnant wife and two young daughters. It comes from a neighbor's security camera. It shows Watts walk out of his home in Frederick, then backs his truck up in the driveway, parking it so a portion of the bed is in the garage. It also shows Watts walking around his truck and putting items inside, including a red gasoline can. Then Watts drives away from his home. Today we're going to take you inside the mind of a killer, inside the mind of Chris Watts, who you just saw on surveillance calmly loading up his truck before driving off with the bodies of his dead family in the back. Now who would commit such a heinous act? Well, we've called in experts who have dealt with hundreds of cases involving sociopaths, but they say none even come close to Chris Watts. Take a look. The Chris Watts case is one of the most disturbing cases that I've ever seen. Chris Watts is what we call a family annihilator. I haven't seen many cases like this because family annihilators usually commit suicide after the murders. Chris didn't do that. Chris is also a narcissist. He is the most important person in his world. And he's also a psychopath. And a narcissistic psychopath is a really bad combo. How he just decided to erase his family. He threw him in the back of his pickup truck, drove him and threw his daughters into an oil bin, buried his wife in a shallow grave. Chris, like most killers, is not terribly bright, which is why he was caught so fast. Who was she supposed to go to? When I saw Chris being interviewed, I said, wow. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. This guy just gave away the farm. When he hugged himself and the shrugs, that's defensive. He pretty much just confessed to murdering his wife and children. I know that Dr. Phil has a background in criminal psychology, and I'd be very interested to see what he thinks. Well, Candace DeLong is someone that I have tremendous respect for. She is a former FBI criminal profiler and criminologist. She also is the host of Investigation Discovery's Deadly Women. Now, Steve Cardian is a former detective and author of a really important book that teaches women how to protect themselves. It's the new superpower for women. Candace, let me start with you. You saw this tape. You've seen some of his interviews. What did you see? The interview he gave to the TV people on his porch, they did a, a close-in shot. His eyes were neither red nor swollen. This was not a man that had been up all night worried and crying. Another thing that occurred to me, he, he says, uh, yeah, when I came home, nobody was here. It was like a ghost town. It was a ghost town. He made it a ghost town by killing everyone else that lived there. You bring up such an important point. Let's take a quick look at that little snippet. There's, it's like, it's vanished. Like, she's not, like, when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. Kids weren't here. It's like, I have no idea, like, where they went. This is a guy with two children and a pregnant wife vanished. And he, he, like you say, there's no redness in his eyes. That is such a good point. He doesn't look like he is emoted at all. Yeah, well, it's what I don't see that tells yeah. me something. I didn't see here. a wedding band. Has he already gotten rid oh, of that? Oh, I didn't look. Uh, he also gave smiles and, and laughter that was completely improper when he was talking about Bella. He says, she was. That's final as an investigator. That jumps out to me as he, he knows that she's already gone. And... People that are narcissistic and think they're getting away with something, it's called duping delight. They can't help but gloat when they think they're pulling the wool over your eyes. He was celebrating his performance. Yeah, and so, so let's take a look at this oil tank where the bodies were discovered. This is where he put his children. Dr. And Phil, that I gotta tell feeder you trap is eight inches wide. The width of those girls shoulder to shoulder is nine and a half inches. Now, I, I, I don't want to say this to be too graphic, but you have to understand the nature of the beast we're talking about here. He had to break their bones to get them in there. And when they tried to lift the girls up, their skin came off. They called it, they, uh, doctors always have nice words for things. They called it degloving because they're, 
He left them there. So when you say, Dr. Phil, who does this? Who does this is a malignant narcissist psychopath. That's what makes these people so dangerous. Coming up, after his family vanished, Chris Watts wasn't acting like a grieving husband, as we say. He certainly wasn't acting like a grieving father. Now we know the man begging for his wife and daughters to come home had killed them all. We're going to look for more hidden clues in his interviews next and talk more about what pathology lies inside this individual. And we're going to talk about the fact that these predators are walking among us. We'll be right back. His neighbors had cameras and he's there seeing this footage for the first time. It was definitely an oh my God moment. There was no doubt. And later, what's happening in that room at that point from the police point of view? He says, I don't know what else I can tell you. They, boom, in their mind, we got them. That was four-year-old Bella Watts singing about her daddy, her hero, just weeks before he murdered her. Let's take a look at Chris Watts talking to the police. Watch carefully at his behavior. How long have you guys been married? So, we've been together eight years, married six this year. Yeah. And this is very unusual behavior. <laughs> What's this door right here go to? It's locked. Do you have a key for it? Locked. Get here and just play it back. Yeah. <laughs> so you normally keep it locked? Yeah, because yeah. they, yeah. They would go in there and they'd be in soap. Like last time we had Vaseline everywhere. You know, so that was not fun. So does she normally make the beds, the kids' beds? No, no. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's this, today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's what friend? Who was she supposed to go to? That's all she told me. Said she's going to the friend's house to take kids. When did she tell you that? This morning when we talked about the last I'm going to try to run some things down using her phone and then see if we can't find somebody. Um, if nobody has heard anything at all, then uh, we'll probably pull the trigger on the phone. Okay. Go that route. Susan Constantine is a renowned body language expert. What do you see? Well, first of all, his emotions are detached. When somebody is concerned about someone that's missing, you're going to see pain or suffering in their forehead, this wrinkling up, the concern. When we see him pacing back and forth, that's internal anxiety. So it's a self-soothing gesture, too. The ones where he's holding his hand like this, other moments he's holding his head, and that is showing that he's concerned, but it's also panic. There's lots of emotions that are flagged, so whatever we're thinking and feeling is being exhibited through our nonverbal communication. Well, let's look at him watching some surveillance video. This is in his neighbor's house. His neighbors had cameras, and so they caught him on camera backing his truck into the garage where he loaded the bodies in, and he's there seeing this footage for the first time. Watch this. At 517. We park out there on the side. I just want to get everything back in. Be easier to load everything out there, all the tools that I had to bring in. Do you think this may be the first time that he thinks, holy <laughs> I'm caught? <laughs> it was definitely an oh my God moment. There was no doubt. So when he was first looking at the video, it didn't hit because he didn't know that they, what he was about to see. The minute he saw that, oh my God, that's when his hands came up, he started to pace. 
and if you look at it close, his also See, his flushing. He turns his back to it. He doesn't want to look he at do, it. He can't. He can't look at it because it's one of those oh my god moments. He almost has to deflect from it. Well, after Chris left, the police spoke to his neighbor alone. All right, appreciate your time. Thanks. Hopefully it comes up here. Yeah. No. Those are not the back and forth, and if you look, the other boats just stuff in and out of the garage. Right. But watch, you'll see him get out. And he walks back and forth a couple times. To be completely honest with you, my wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened, because I've heard them pull out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs, and he gets crazy. Really? And that's pretty recently? Yeah. Well, actually, that's why she went and visited people, because she wanted to get away from the situation. Coming up next, inside the room where Chris Watts was interrogated for more than six hours. You won't believe the reason he laughs when he's being questions about killing his wife and his children, plus what his mistress told police. That's next. What are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? It's a hard question to answer. The defendant coldly and deliberately ended four lives. Not in a fit of rage, not by way of accident, but in a calculated and sickening manner. What must Bella, age four, and Celeste, age three, must have experienced or thought is their father, the one man on this planet who was supposed to nurture and protect them, was snuffing out their lives. The man seated to my right smothered his daughters. The heinous murders of Shannon Watts and her young daughters, Bella and Celeste, has people asking what kind of father could be such a monster that he not only kills his pregnant wife, but his two beautiful little girls? Well, the answer is someone with a narcissistic personality disorder. The scariest part is a narcissist actually thinks he can get away with it and they get caught so easily because they don't look at the other points of view. Take a look at this video of Chris being interrogated and pay attention to the very end. What are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? I mean, it's like, I don't mean that's hard. And, and hard I know question this, to answer. I know this stuff, that's a hard but, question to answer. Right. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't have nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. But like, yeah, now he laughs and he smiles because he's at this point, he still thinks he's the smartest person in the room, right? Yeah. He still believes he's the smartest person in the room. They always do. Research on psychopaths, and that's a clinical term, and, and, it, and it, the hallmark is that they don't feel guilt, remorse, or empathy. It's easy for these people to <clears throat> kill other people because they don't feel stressed. There's been research on psychopaths that oftentimes their pulse doesn't even increase when they're committing a crime uh, or ly lying on a lie detector test. They don't get nervous like the rest of us do. It's a DNA thing. There is a difference between the irresistible impulse and the impulse not resisted. Now think about that. There is an irresistible impulse where something happens and you just don't have the ability to resist. You know, the crime of passion or something where you're blackout rage, you're just so incensed you cannot control yourself versus the impulse you choose not to resist. And there's every indication that this was a premeditated crime. This, he, this, he did not snap. No, he did right? not snap. You, you don't believe he snapped. Absolutely not. Snapping is, is uh, when sudden emotion and shock happens. Uh, you walk in the door of your home, you go in the bedroom and your spouse is with your sister. 
or something like that, and, and you just lose it, and you might pick up a lamp and throw it, that is snapping. Snapping is not premeditatedly taking the lives of three people. As soon as he had his hands around his, uh, the, the, older, the first child that he killed first, he could have said, no, no, this is not right. I'm, I'm, no, I've got to find another way. He killed her and then did it again to the other child, right. as only a psychopath could. Chris was having a secret affair with a co-worker. I don't know how much he banked on those two running off together, because he was seeing other women as well behind Shanann's back. A grieving family confronts the man who killed their pregnant daughter and their grandchildren. Who dare you take the lives of my daughter Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. I want the world to know that our daughter and her children were so loved by us. So you ask, why not just divorce this person? You know, right? If you want out so bad, why not just divorce? Understand, a narcissist wants to be the center of attention. The narcissist has all kinds of currency. So what happens if he divorces? He still has financial burdens. They had taken bankruptcy once before. They were in debt again. They were three payments behind on their mortgage. They were $8,000 in credit card next. debt. They were totally drowning. And they had another baby on the way when they already were in debt. But if you murder the family, you make money because there's $20,000 life insurance policies on the two children and a $50,000 life insurance policy on her. So you go $90,000 to the good, and more importantly, you become the object of sympathy. The police discovered that while his wife and children were away, Chris was having a secret affair with a co-worker named Nicole Kessinger. They talked to her. Take a look. I think a lot of people are going to probably assume that I was the catalyst for his movement. But I don't think, you know, not me, like, instructing him, but him deciding to do that because he had me in his life and because he was so, like, infatuated with what we had going on. But, you know, like, I try to put the, the reason to it at the end, like, why would you wipe out your family to be with me. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, like, compute. It's like, how would that go? Like, hey, my family just disappeared? And you think that I'm gonna just not be concerned about that? Okay, and by the way, take a look at that picture of her and his wife. Do you notice they look an awful lot alike? Dr. Phil, though, wait, uh, hold on a moment. <laughs> she shouldn't, Nicole Kessinger should not feel that special, okay? Because he was set meeting people on Tinder. You know, I, I don't know how much he banked on those two running off together because he was seeing other women as well behind Shanann's back. Yeah, if they'll do it with you, they'll do it to you. True. Let's, well put. Let's look at this Tinder tape. We just like met at the parking lot in Chick fil A. I don't know, it's, it sounds funny. And then um, well, I got something to drink, and then we just went back to my house, and he was rough, as in, you know, just pulling my hair and putting his arms around my, my uh, neck. It was like a, a rape fantasy thing, that's how I, you know, like describe it. And again, we're showing him impulse, no impulse control, immediate gratification, and no sense of what's, how this is going to play once your family disappears. What are you going to tell your girlfriend? All right, next, the telling text Shannon sent her friend before she was killed. We'll take a look at that when we come back. We did it again. <laughs> I like that shirt. That's awesome. Guess, uh, guess, guess when you want to, it happens. I want to 
take a look at where he is told that he failed a polygraph. And, you know, Steve, you've been in that room. I want you to comment on this after we look at it. Do you know where Shenan is now? No. Did you physically cause Shenan's disappearance? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shenan? No. Do you want to talk to you about the results, okay? Sure. So, um, it was completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not stop. Okay. I'm, just I'm, stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. Everything that I've just, I have told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now, like, I did not. And it's, it's, not even, it's not even an option right now because uh-huh. you did not pass the polygraph, uh-huh. so I know you were being deceptive, so that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. If we bring in your dad, would you promise me that you'll talk to him? Would it be easier if you told him he told us? That's chilling. What's happening in that room at that point from the police point of view? It, when he says, okay, it's, it's not something an innocent person, he's confirming that he, he failed the lie detector test. And then he says, I don't know what else or what I can tell you. They, boom, in their mind, we got him. What was the moment, what was the first identifiable moment or behavior that indicated that this was going to happen? He didn't want a third baby. He was afraid. He couldn't financially afford that. He wanted to separate, and his wife was not going along with that. And he really fancied himself as a new man. Look how much weight he had lost. He had really gotten himself in shape. He wanted to hit the reset button. And in his ignorant, immature uh, way, he thought this was the way to go about it. The, what motivated Chris to to kill his family isn't even in the book of killing your family motivations. Right. I mean, it just stri- he wanted freedom. He wanted exactly as you described to be free of the problems of daily marital uh, life. Now, Shannon sent a text to a friend and and said, "Here's what I plan to say to him. I know that you need time. I want to give you what you're asking for and respect your space." It is not healthy for me or Nico. I need you to just give a little bit of what I did or didn't do. So I'm not going crazy. Tell, you she's saying, tell me in my head to figure it out. I know I can't fix this by myself, that we are going to have to work together. And while she's planning this, he's planning her murder. We'll be right back. Candace, final comments about this. What, what do they need to know to understand and protect themselves? Any man uh, that's in a similar situation, uh, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, I do not want another child. Or uh, we're spending too much money. Uh, the kids are not going to private school. Release some of the pressure uh, from the marriage. And it might just get better. And from the woman's point of view, 
if, or for the wife's point of view, if your husband is under a lot of pressure and is pulling away from you, you need to be very vigilant. And if he is seeing another woman, that woman has his heart and you are in trouble. Take precautions, leave if you have to. Nancy? You know, Dr. Phil, I'm just so overcome with the sadness of this case. What I take away from this is, this is the truth. This is what happened. And if you are in a relationship and you're the only one in it, and you're trying and trying and trying, if you've got a guy like Chris Watts, it's not gonna get better. You need to leave and find your happiness. Yes, what do you think? And, yeah, and the other thing is, is that these type of people can be natural performers. They are very likable, they're very approachable, they have, they can be very charismatic. And when you tap into things that you find fault with, they become unglued. So look for those signs. Do they have the appropriate emotion that fits what they're saying? If things are off, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> listen to that because that's telling you it is off and don't make um, excuses for it. Steve, you're an enforcer here, you're a policeman here, you deal with these perpetrators. Tell these people how to protect. Dr. Phil, it takes about seven times in domestic issues before a woman will come forward and take action against her husband. So. Uh, in this case with Watts, he had, he had a great front stage. Look for those little things, those little subtle things behind the stage that are going to tell you that there's a problem. And it, it may be some, not be something you need to contact law enforcement for, but reach out to social services. Reach out to a psychologist. And I just want to say that law enforcement did an excellent job. He was a horrible criminal, and thank God for that. Yeah. Don't be in denial. I mean, if something doesn't feel right, acknowledge that to yourself don't I'm not saying give up but I'm saying also be aware in your mind and take precautions uh, my wife Robin is one of the foremost ambassadors uh, in the fight against domestic violence and she just returned from Capitol Hill where she testified about this and some other issues with women about domestic violence and she has something that she created called the Aspire app. And the Aspire app is an app that you put on your smartphone and you can download it for free and it looks like a news app. It just says news and, and when you open it, sure enough, it gives you the news. But it actually is an alert because you tap it three times and it sends out a message to whoever you have pre-programmed it that says, I'm in trouble and I need help and I need it now. That's right. And this is a lifeline that saves lives, right? That's right. And sometimes your abuser will take your phone away from you. So I always like to tell everyone, if you know that you have a friend, a coworker, or a family member being abused, and maybe they have had their phone taken away, do your best to sneak a phone to the victim and download that app. And there's always a way, find that way, to get a phone to a victim so they have it, they can hide it, and that's their lifeline out of that situation. And especially if they have children, they're on that app, there, there is a page that tells shelters and uh, other places to go when they are ready to get out, but but also it says the safe way to exit a, a violent situation. So there's all kinds of information on there, very life-saving information. I'm very proud of the app. It was recognized on Capitol Hill as one of the top two apps at, at best educating uh, the victims and everyone else on domestic violence. So yeah. I do hope that people will go to whengeorgiasmiled.org and download the app. It's free and uh, it will save lives. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. And um, think about it ahead of time. If you know you're in a tough situation, make plans because you may need them. So I, I hope you understand more about what happened after today. Thank you so much, Candace, Nancy. Says, thank you, yeah. Steve. All of this has been so enlightening. I've learned a lot today. I hope you have as well. So I want to thank all of my guests today for their invaluable expertise. I want to remind you that this story is really about these victims. Little Celeste and Bella will never get to grow up, and Shannon will never 
get to welcome her baby son. And Chris Watts will spend the rest of his life behind bars paying for this heinous crime. May Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and her unborn son, Nico, rest in peace. For more information, go to drphil.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.